You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. B.A. Weisinger, R-I-G-H-T-W-I-N-G-G-R-O-U-P-C-H-A-R-A-C-D-E-R-I-S-T-I-C-U-R-I-D-E-N-F-A-I-R-S, G-O-L, I-I-N-O. 2 GLE 2006 HTTP colon slash slash www.sobs.org According to Yolo, the connection between Christian identity and blatant racism could be partly attributed to fundamentalist Protestants from the Midwest Bible Belt and Southern states who were fervent vocal proponents of the movement that would eventually become Christian identity. These individuals included James Lovell, a Texas Baptist, Wesley Swift, an Alabama Methodist, Joe Jeffers, an Alabama Baptist, and Herbert Armstrong, an Iowa Adventist. 14 While Cameron is given credit for being a primary influence in the early development of Christian identity, Californians Wesley Swift, Bertrand Comparet, and William Porter Gill were also key figures in the early development of Christian identity in the United States. 15. Gerald L. K. Smith was a notable national figure in the development of identity doctrine. Smith was a Church of Christ minister who was an associate of Louisiana political kingpin Huey Long. Characterized as a bombastic and charismatic orator, his extreme ego and political naivete became apparent and detrimental during the unsuccessful presidential campaign of William M. K. Smith became a friend of Henry Ford's in the late 1930s and received funding from the automobile industry icon for a radio broadcast series. Smith credits Ford for showing him the connection between Judaism and communism. This focus on the denunciation of both Jews and communism was a prevalent theme during speaking engagements and in his mail-order ministry, to businesses that made Smith a millionaire. 16 After World War II Smith moved to Los Angeles where he became affiliated with anti-Semitic and white supremacists in Southern California. Smith's high-profile public appearances included anti-Semitic and racist rhetoric that resulted in the mobilization of opposition minority and Jewish communities in the Los Angeles area. 17 Wesley Swift, who had been affiliated with the Ku Klux Klan KKK, in the early 1940s, May 18th had been at least one early source of the identity hermeneutic that furthered seedline identity theology. Kaplan provides the following quote in Radical Religion in America to indicate how Smith's identity beliefs were influenced by Swift. He opened the Bible and demonstrated to me with proper text that Christ's worst enemies were not God's chosen people. He identified the true Israel which gave us the Messiah. Dot, dot, dot. He demonstrated that the crucifiers of Christ were apostates, sons of Satan, and the seed of Cain. 19. In addition to Gerald L. K. Smith, Wesley Swift was affiliated with several notable figures influential in the rise of Christian identity after World War II. Included in this group were Bertrand Comparet, William Gale, and Richard Butler. Comparet was a Stanford-educated lawyer and had held the position of deputy district attorney in San Diego. He was an active Christian identity preacher and was a close associate of Smith. Comparet successfully defended Smith during a 1955 libel suit. 20 Gale was a former army lieutenant colonel during World War I who frequently embellished his war record. 21 He was the founder of the Posse Comitatus a movement he outlined in a 1971 article published in the Identity Newsletter. Posse Comitatus was founded on the belief that, constitutionally, no governmental body higher than the county level is legitimate. 20 to give and his fellow Posse Comitatus followers refusal to acknowledge state and federal governmental authority resulted in legal complications with the Internal Revenue B.A. Weisinger. R-I-G-H-T-W-I-N-G-G-R-O-U-P-C-H-A-R-A-C-D-E-R-I-S-T-I-C-U-R-I-T-E-N-F-A-I-R-S, G-O-L-I-I-N-O-2-G-O-L-E-2006-H-T-T-P-Colon-Slash-Slash-Slash-Slash-Slash-Slash-Slash-Slash-Slash-Slash-Slash-Slash-Slash-Slash-Slash-
His father was a Jew. The central premise of his Christian identity beliefs and ministry were based on a complete denial of his heritage. 23 Posse commented to his members were responsible for several acts of violence in the Northwest and Midwest during the 1980s. An example of this violence was the 1983 shootout between Gordon Call and federal marshals. Call, an icon of the radical right and a member of the North Dakota Posse Comitatus, was killed during the incident. Many of the people who later participated in the militia movement were believed to have been involved in the Posse Comitatus groups of this time period. 24 Posse Comitatus members seized an opportunity to spread their message to distressed farmers during the 1980s farm crisis. Right-wing religious rhetoric may appeal to many people for reasons other than religion. American Terrorist by Lou Mitchell and Dan Urbett mentions Timothy McVeigh's interest a church near Yellowstone National Park that was involved in stockpiling food and munitions, but their New Age religious ways failed to trip his trigger. McVeigh was not a believer in organized religion. Instead, he thought natural law guided the universe through a higher power using an internalized method to instill right and wrong in a person. 25 Yet McVeigh attempted to contact Andreas Strasmier, a German national believed to be staying at the Christian identity community in Elohim City, Oklahoma, seeking a safe haven after the bombing. McVeigh had met Strasmier at a gun show. He also attempted to call a representative of the National Alliance to arrange refuge. Neo-Nazi William Pierce, author of the Turner Diaries, was the head of the National Alliance. 26 Although he contacted these two groups to seek assistance with escape and sanctuary, McVeigh should not be characterized as a Christian identity follower or a neo-Nazi. Richard Butler, a former engineer for Lockheed, had been a member of Swift's California Church. Butler moved to Idaho in 1973 and started the Church of Jesus Christ Christian in Cooler de Alien. His most notable political right-wing activity paralleling the Christian identity movement was the establishment of the Aryan Nations. 27 Aryan Nations served as a consolidator of right-wing groups, including those who followed Christian identity doctrine and those who did not follow the movement. Bruce Hoffman in Inside Terrorism describes the Aryan Nations as being an extremist, anti-Semitic, neo-Nazi group of white supremacists, survivalist and militant tax resistors. 28 Aryan Nations members were involved in a series of violent acts beginning in the 1980s. These acts included the killing of a Denver, Colorado, Jewish radio talk show host by an Aryan Nations splinter group known as The Order. Members of The Order also committed several armed robberies and bombings during its reign of terror. Butler died in 2004 but not before he saw his Aryan Nations organization financially decimated by a civil judgment. 29 Although Richard Butler's demise appears to have resulted in further fragmentation of the national leadership of the Christian identity movement, the danger posed by the overall goal of its followers to establish a racially pure white Aryan country continues to be a matter of concern. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste.